Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Today we're going to talk about Deceased, number one, the new zombie story from DC Comics, kind of an Elseworld story here. It is written by Tom Taylor with art by Trevor Hairstein, Stefano Guadino, and James Heron. Now, I said... This is kind of a zombie story with a bit of a questioning inflection there because I don't believe, I, I think calling this a zombie story does it a bit of a disservice. I think it sells it short. And if you were thinking about picking this up um, but didn't want to because you're tired of zombie stuff, it's everywhere. we got The Walking Dead that's kind of played out at this point. Tons of zombie movies, all kinds of stuff like that. I would say... Give this a shot because it's definitely not a straight zombie story. Um, we're going to get into spoilers here in a minute, but if you don't want to, if you want to, you know, decide to buy this and you don't want any spoilers, I would say um, it's very much not a traditional zombie story. It does have some apocalyptic um, elements with, you know, a wide ranging infection type thing, but it's definitely not roar brains, you know, the undead coming back to life type thing. Um, it's very different than that um, and it's also the cause of the infection is very steeped in DC lore which I really appreciate it and also it has a lot of um, I would say social commentary in it from the way that the virus spreads right um, which I enjoyed it's a little it's a little on the nose but I still enjoyed it as well. And just this first issue, I can already tell you that Tom Taylor, who we know is a fantastic writer, has just nailed um, a bunch of character moments in just this first issue. There's a couple scenes with the Justice League that are amazing. There's a couple other character moments that I just absolutely loved. And if you want to stick around for the spoiler portion of this video, we'll get into all that. So if you were on the fence about this, I think it's well, well worth the $4 to at least check out the first issue or stick around for the spoiler review portion of this video. We're going to dive into it, go through the book page by page. I'm going to call out all the stuff that I love because I don't think there was anything in this book that I didn't like. So let's dive into the spoiler portion and start going through Deceased number one here. All right, so it starts out with this great page here and there's this narrator who is kind of kind of you know doing a voiceover type thing throughout the entire book and I don't believe we find out who he is or who they are could be she I don't know um we don't know find out who they are but it's got some really good stuff going on here and she said it says here my mother used to tell me there was no such thing as monsters there was nothing hiding in the dark nothing going to jump out of the shadows I wish I I wish I could have told my child the same thing and there's this first page here where it, it's very clearly dark side and then there's um some sound effects going on here and um it says here um the uh, i'm sorry it says uh it started with something like thunder i don't know how else to describe it because it was a sound no one had ever heard before it was the sound of superman breaking the jaw of a god and it's got this great splash page oops with the the justice league fighting dark side um get this on camera just busting his jaw right there and we got the whole justice league here flash black lightning got aquaman poking out hawk girl hal jordan green lantern batman superman wonder woman nightwing green arrow great great stuff and i think um black canaries on the next page um and it's you know just kind of talking about what what was been going on here because we're seeing the end of a fight and says, Dark Side's invasion lasted a week. The Justice League battled tirelessly for everyone, as the Justice League is wont to do. And they said they kept them fighting to unpopulated areas. It's good stuff. And says that it was perhaps the League's finest hour. It was their last together. Good, great leading statement there. And then they basically tell uh, Dark Side, You're going to leave Earth. You're done here. You're beaten. And then as he's jumping into a boom tube, he says, I will not return. I have no need. For the truth is, I have what I came for. And then he takes the lasso of truth off his neck and walks through the boom tube. And and I love this. Uh, green arrows like, uh, you know, I thought that was going really well right up until that last sentence. And then Black Canary is like, anyone know what he was talking about? And then this little pager goes off in Batman's hand and he says, Cyborg is missing. Um, then they say, you know, like he's not, he says he's not on Metropolis, he's not on Earth, and they're like, 
how do you know that? How do you know that? And this is one of the great character moments I was talking about, aside from Green and Arrow's uh, line there. He says, I have a location monitor running in one of his subroutines. What? Batman, please. And, and uh, Black Canary questions him on it. She's like, you what? And he's like, he's a walking weapon with apocalyptic technology running throughout his body and brain, which we've barely scratched the surface of understanding. It would be irresponsible to allow that kind of power to move freely. Pitch perfect, paranoid Batman. I love it. And then Superman's like, uh, did Vic know you were tracking him? And, and Batman just doesn't say anything again pitch perfect batman and flash is like you secretly hacked our friend are you tracking any of us do you have a tracker on superman and then batman has a moment of telling silence and then he says no and then and again another great green arrow moment anyone else concerned about that slight pause there thought it was fantastic and so batman says i have a two light year reach on him and he's not in solar system in the solar system and he is definitely not he has been captured by apocalypse and taken back or captured by dark side and taken back to apocalypse and he's being tortured by Desaad. and there's some uh great stuff here um Desaad is in questioning him about the anti-life equation which is something that dark side has always been after and he's asking you do you know about it metal man and he says no and then he says, it's the end of all free will for the one who controls it. It's the domination of all sentient races. And then I love this from Vic. He says, yeah, well, I try not to kink shame anyone. Great line, great line. I love quippy heroes in the face of torture and destruction and things like that. Um, great stuff. And he said uh, um, that Desaad says that Almighty Darkseid possesses half of the anti-life equation he believed the other half was manifested on your world and turns out it was and it was inside victor stone he contained the other half of the anti-life equation um great stuff and he like he tells uh, uh or dark side tells uh decide to rip out uh, his tongue Ooh, just because he's making quips Ugh, grody um and so they need he summoned a dark side summons death and he says um well do they if um they need death because if Victor Stone dies, then they lose the equation, right? They need him to be the carrier for it. So he summons death, um, the Black Racer, which we see coming in here. And he says, uh, Black Racer, I have need of you. Um, then the, the narrator says here, Later, after his system had grown him a new tongue, Cyborg explained that this was their mistake. They took a piece of death, and that changed the equation right so they complete the anti-life equation and it drives dark side mad he's digging it out of his own brain he it's you know he can't stand it right and he it drives him insane he actually jumps out of the building that they're in and dives into one of the uh, the fire pits of apocalypse uh, and blows up apocalypse from the inside out but not before uh, Cyborg jumps back into a boom tube, goes back, lands in Metropolis, and just as soon as he lands on Earth, his systems connect to the internet, and it spreads the anti-life equation, and anyone that looks at a screen of a device that's infected with the anti-life equation is infected by it. And that's what I meant at the top when I was talking about, so the, the virus is steeped in dc lore meaning it's from um it's from the anti-life equation merged with what apocalypse or with what dark side knows plus the stuff that's in cyborg and then we get the black racer the manifestation of death in the dc universe and then what i meant by social commentary it infects anyone that's looking at a device because we're all glued to our phones aren't we and so as soon as everyone sees it they go nuts and start slashing at themselves, trying to get it out of their own heads. It says here, um, as it took hold, desperate, frightened people tried to tear the equation from their heads, and then they were enslaved. Great, great stuff. So we got a scene here with Superman talking with Mr. Miracle and Big Barda saying, you know, it's like cyborgs on Apocalypse, and you guys help me go get him. And then Superman hears the screams, goes outside, sees the apocalyptic uh, scene there before him and he's like oh i gotta get to my family gotta get to john and lois 
And then this is another. This is where I get some other great, great character moments. We got uh, John Kent and Damien just sitting there playing some video games like the best bud kids that they are. They're definitely still kids, and uh, they're like Lois is looking for her phone. And right before uh, Jonathan Kent, Superboy goes to pick it up, Superman busts in, blows it out of his hand, and says, "Don't look at the screen." Blows up the TV. Great stuff. Um, Batman is in his bat cave doing his Batman thing, sitting at the bat computer, um, and he's like running contests. And it says the computer says, "Virus quarantine firewalls in place, all systems running on local intranet." And Batman says, "Connect the analog, uh, connect the backup analog system, run some in, run some calculations." And it says, "An estimated 600 million worldwide infected." At the current exponential rate of internet dissemination, the virus will spread to almost every connected device within days. Insane. Billions will be infected. infected. And then he shouts at the computer to uh, basically run an EMP on Wayne Manor. Just destroy every you know electronic device in Wayne Manor so no one else gets infected. Um, great, great stuff. And then this is the character moment I was talking about, right? So Damien can't get in contact with Batman because he just destroyed all the electronics and Lois instantly takes up this very maternal position with him, right? You know, I wouldn't expect Lois to be one to just instantly slide into a maternal position, um, but, you know, she's a mother herself. Uh, Damien is her son's best friend, so she just slides right into it, gets down on her knees to, you know, gets down to his level to talk to him. It's, it's great, and then this scene here where she's behind him, got her hands on his shoulders, just comforting him. I love it, absolutely love it. Oh, man, and then we go back to the manor, and it looks like definitely uh, Nightwing and Red Robin, I'm guessing that's Tim, have been infected. They are assaulting Batman, and they are... Dick is just ripping him a new one here at the end, and that's all we get. That's the end. Great great issue so it definitely has some of the feel of a zombie style uh infection mass infection post-apocalyptic story but like i said it's the the root of the infection is steeped in dc lore it's basically the anti-life equation merged with uh technology and then we have um some social commentary with it all being based in spreading through our screens our phones computers tablets whatever great stuff uh some great character moments solid solid first issue what to what i hope will be a fantastic kind of elseworlds what if style mini series great stuff guys did you read dc so let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below thank you so much for watching if this is your first time here at the channel hit that subscribe button it would mean a lot to me and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop